In this video, we're going to focus on how we can control the padding or the margin of the X scale for our labels. As you can see here, we are away from the bar here, a few pixels or about 25 pixels, but we can push them up as well, play in the center by default, which is the default setting, or push it all down. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to look how to add padding and margin to the X scale labels in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need to do is we need to go to our website chartjs3.com getting started on this specific website which you can find as well in the description box because we're going to get the boiler template. So once you're on here, copy this chunk of code here, there we are, copy this and if you want to understand this code please watch this video here. So then I will paste that in there, cut out the title and put the title in here, save, refresh. Now we have this. What I want to do is I want to maximize the bar charts. So I'm going to say here 80%, save, refresh, there we are. So once we have this, what I want to do is I want to focus on this here. For that, we're going to have two separate items that we need for that. I've tried to look for a better way, but I could not find. So this is the only option so far. So I'm going to scroll down here. And first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say comma here. And I'm going to create a hold on. It is just here after, yeah, that's correct. And then we're going to say your plugins. We're going to create a plugin. And this plugin here will be called, let's give it our scale padding. Very simple and very descriptive. So once we have that, I'm going to say a constant scale or X scale padding. And then I'm going to say here, ID equals stats. And then we say here, um, let's do here, we can say here before draw. Uh, before data sets draw this doesn't really matter but basically it would indicate the timing of drawing since our data sets will be drawn uh, or we will reposition our uh, labels before we draw the data set but it doesn't really matter because the scale will be drawn first before it draws the bars and the data sets so this is a perfect timing to grab but you could do after data sets as well it's up to you doesn't really impact much so then i'm going to say here uh, chart arcs and plugin options and uh, once we did this i want to do an object destructuring if you're not familiar with object destructuring i'm going to recommend you to watch my video understanding chart yes object destructuring which you can find as well in the description box and basically what i'm doing here this is an object destructuring. So then what I want to grab here is the CTX. And the data might be, I am not certain about that one, but scales we definitely need. And we want to grab the X and Y scale. So once we get that, that is all fine and working. So now what I want to do here is, first of all, let's do here console log and show you the X value. If I save this here, refresh, open up the developer tab, you can see here we get some information that we absolutely need so once we have here you can see here the full information and this is the specific information that i want i want to go here into the underscore label items which basically goes to every specific label here and then if i open up one of these items here which is in this case the monday that's specifically geared to this specific label here you can see this text baseline of middle so once we have this, we have access to change this to top or bottom, and then you will see it will start to change nicely. This is really nice to do. And sadly enough, ChartJS don't have a direct option to do this, although I would assume this is a quite easy, tiny adjustment. Anyway, doesn't matter. I am not a maintainer of ChartJS, so I can't say. However, we can access this, and let's start to access that. So what we're going to do here is, first of all, I'm going to say here, let's grab that one. I'm going to the x dot and then we're going to grab here just this uh hold on the label underscore label items just going to grab this one and for now i just say index zero which would pinpoint the monday so basically this one here and then we can say here the baseline text baseline this is just a canvas uh command the canvas api command so we say your text baseline baseline and I say equal and let's put this this is middle so let's say top and let's see what happens if I save this refresh you can see here now nicely all right it will change beautifully so you can see here we have all of this but this one is top and if you're wondering why is top pushing it down well basically we'll say 
from the top, ignore the top and go down. That's basically what it does. Middle would be just exactly in the center or on the, on the vertical level. And if I say bottom, you will see it will go up here. All right. So there we have one part. So let's play around with this now and let's do it for every specific item. To do this, all we need to do is we need to grab this array here. And let me show you if I save this. Refresh, open up developer tab. Open up this, you can see here the full array. So now we have access to all of them. So now we can say every one of those, which is now right now as a text baseline of middle, for number two, one, three, all to the way to the number six or index number six. Let's reposition them in wherever we want. In this case, I'm going to say here, let's grab this. I'm going to make a for loop, or for each loop, sorry, a for each loop. And then I'm going to put here a function error expression that and once I have this, what I want to do now is I want to say here, uh, let's use, use the shorthand label because it's basically a shorthand of this label and index. Although I don't know if we need index, but just in case. Now what I want to do is just grab only this and then I'm going to say for every label, reposition or adjust the text baseline to bottom. So if I do this, save that, refresh, you can see here, they're all moving now up and let's put it down to the, to the, to the bottom, I, I guess, or I want to say top. So ignore top and go push it down. That's basically what it does. There we are. So now we have this and you might say, well, what if I have more space or I have a different item? What can I do? Because for example, I'm going to show you here. What if I do another letter with the Y? All right. So let's say here money instead of Monday. You can see here, look what's going on. It clips off the item. And you can see here, if I'm moving this, it has a temporary adjustment, I guess. There we are. And that's because of the animation or something of the reload. But anyway, it doesn't matter so much. We can fix that if that's a real problem. But you can see this is a bigger problem here. It removes a part of it or clips off that part. Let's solve that. And that's basically the issue here comes from this here. If I go in here, you can see here, open one of these, we have here the text offset, which basically indicate there's still seven pixels, seven point plus plus pixels of uh, pixels going down, pushing it down. So what we could do is instead of that, remove that text offset. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab this, and then we say here, text offset, and then maybe instead of seven, let's make this five pixels. If I save this, then probably you can see here, it will just nicely keep it vis visual or visible. So this is probably important if you have more bigger font size, then you might uh, change it and you can see it reloads it suddenly. Let's make sure we reload like that immediately. There we are. Of course, we could just say zero, but if we do zero, we get another issue here that there's no more padding considered in here. So. What I want to do is, and maybe you'll say, well, hold on. All right, I'll do five. Five is fine, but I'm not satisfied with this. I want even more space. All right, let's go and work on that one now. So what I'm going to do here, and this is what I was explaining, you need two independent parts. So we have this part here now, and that's all fine. We don't have to touch that one anymore. But what we have to do now is go and work on the height. And for the height, we're going to do exactly the opposite than uh, instead of the width. So you might say, why are we going to go on the X scale if we're going to focus on the height? It's just how it is programmed here. So probably there's some logic behind it that I don't fully uh, understand. But if it works, it works. So let's go for that. So on the X scale, yes, so that's on the horizontal scale, we're going to adjust the height. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a special built-in command here. This is the fit or the after fit which will recalculate and put again an adjustment on the scale. Then we're going to say here context, and this context is going to put a function error expression. And within here, I want to show you first, what is this context giving us? And then you understand what I'm doing here and why. So let's grab that, put that in there, save this, then refresh. Nothing happens, of course, because we don't return any specific value or don't adjust any value. So now we have the console log, uh, on the scale, let's see if this one, let me just hide that one so we don't have, so we're not confused by it. There we are. We get all the information. Click on this and then you can see here the height. And this height here 
controls how many pixels in height is this point here all the way down here. So you might say, well, I need a lot more space here. I get that. Let's adjust the height of that. Instead of 28 pixels, let's make it 50. So I'm going to say here height, and then I'm going to go down in here, and then let's do it here. We're going to say ctx.height, and then here we can just say, uh, well, we can say equal plus, or plus equal maybe uh, 25 pixels. Make sure that is equal, of course. Save this. Refresh. Oh, all right, CTX. Sorry, my bad. I'm, I'm thinking about CTX always, but of course, you're not allowed to use CTX because this here is not CTX, it's context. My bad, because I'm always thinking about drawing in the canvas. So that's right. Don't, don't make that mistake. All right. So now we have this, but you can see here, well, if I open up the developer tab, you will see immediately we have a lot of extra space, but it ignores our space here. All right. So let's start to play around with that and fix that item here. How can we fix that? Just add an offset here. Maybe if you have five, we can say you now plus 25. If I save that, refresh, you can see here, it will go nicely like that. And that's basically how you can do that. And uh, there might be even a way to do this. Maybe even a uh, other way. Let's see if we can do it programmatically or soft coding. So for that, what we need to do is, we're going in here. Um, I guess maybe I'll make that another video for that. But anyway, that is basically the way to do it. You can just put it in there. Once you have this code here, put it in there, make it matching. And there we are. If I put this back here on middle, save, refresh. All right. Of course, you want to go to the middle now. Why? Because of the, the height is plus this. So it's being, uh, it being adjusted by based on this value here. Then of course you could maybe remove this or do anything else. But of course, by then you wouldn't need this anyway. This should be more than sufficient for creating padding or margin on your X scale. So if you enjoyed this video, maybe you want to do some more advanced fancy stuff like, for example, making clickable X scale labels. They have the labels here. When you click on them, you will go be, you will be directed to a different website or different page, which is can be also very interesting. In that case, this video here on how to create clickable X scales with links in chart.js. It's a video that you can watch as well.